Welcome to the God Culture. We are proving out the location of the Hittikel River, which is not ever the Tigris River in Scripture in any sense, nor even history for that matter. There is no support, no evidence, and we will prove it. This is a continuation. So let's jump right in. What does the Bible say? Isn't that really the question? Does it really mention the Euphrates several times, yet never even once identify the Tigris River? Except for this one odd and wrong reference of the Hittikel being the Tigris, which is a faulty assertion, which we've already proven it is not. Scripture's actually abundant on this, and it's very clear. Let's find the Tigris River in the Bible. It's there 27 times. Now we'll deal with one other passage in all of Scripture which identifies the Hittikel River. Yes, there are only two. The word Hittikel, which is Hebrew, never appears in Revelation, by the way, as another channel really screws up and confuses the Tigris and the Euphrates. You can't do that. Scripture does not do that. And that's very inconsistent and makes their claim yet more ridiculous. Yep, saliva. Daniel had a vision next to the great river Hittikel. Now, is he talking about the Tigris? Well, he never lived on the Tigris River, so that's an extremely poor assumption. Now, we'll show you. However, the Book of Tobit, a lost tribe of Naphtali, or the northern kingdom of Israel, was taken into Assyria, with the northern kingdom, and he lived on the Tigris. Daniel was southern, southern kingdom of Israel, from Judea, and he lived on the Euphrates River, not the Tigris. We'll show you specifically. So, who would be the better example to figure out what do they call the Tigris in Hebrew? Well, Tobit would. And the Tigris is called the Tigris in Hebrew, according to Tobit, <laughs> not the Hittikel. Look, they did render it Tigris in Hebrew. Imagine that. There it is right there. And the book of Tobit was in the 1611 King James Bible, as well as found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So we're not going to argue in this video whether or not it's scripture, but at least it's history dating back to at least 150 BC or so in the dating of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So yeah, it's appropriate. In fact, not that long after Daniel's era, even, though it was written 150 years before Daniel. Or at least that's the era it's referring to. If some wish to argue those kinds of points, we don't really care. We figure that when a book says that Tobit wrote it, then it means it was written when Tobit lived. I know it's, it, it's, it's crazy of us to say something like that, but you know, uh, it just works that way. <laughs> the Bible is truth. And when it says Moses wrote the Torah, well, then Moses wrote the Torah, not somebody else 50 years, 100 years, 200 years, 500 years later. And then scribes copied it over. So all we find is copies. We don't find originals, and we can't date anything effectively because we don't know when the original was created other than by the writing itself. So we don't play that game. So, is it reasonable to assume Daniel knew the name of the Tigris River as well? Of course it is. And he did not call it Hittikel, but is referring to something else. We'll prove it. Now, here's a map from historian Herodotus based on his descriptions of the names of places around the earth in 450 BC. And what does it show for the name of the Tigris River? It's the Tigris. So, 150 years before Daniel, Tobit says that river's called the Tigris River, not the Hittikel. And Tobit lived there. Daniel never lived on the Tigris. And then, 100 years or so after Daniel, it's called the Tigris. Among the learned, which Daniel most certainly was, one of the most well-educated and accurate writers in all of Scripture, especially his prophecies, are absolutely Dead on. Amazing. And the 1611 King James really nails this down as it renders Hittikel in Daniel 10.4 in Genesis 2.14, 14, 
but it renders Tigris in Tobit as well. See, that's in the King James and was translated by the same translators at the same time that they were translating Genesis and Daniel. It does not translate Hittichel, but as Tigris, because it is not the Hittichel. And it has a name in Scripture, and we'll show you that too, and look at the margin note for Daniel 10.4 here. It leads to Genesis 2. But it does not lead to Tobit. And it would, because the translators were placing anchors in there for any time the word appears. It's obviously not the same word. And we already showed you in Hebrew, it most definitely is not. Tobit wrote Tigris in Hebrew. The Hittichel is not the Tigris, in any sense. Remember, the northern kingdom of Israel was taken captive first into Assyria, not Babylon. Assyria's capitals were on the eastern side of the Tigris River. The southern kingdom of Israel was taken into Babylon over a hundred years later, and there is no association between the two as they were actually on opposite sides. See, Babylon was assisted. It destroyed Nineveh during the takeover of Assyria, and actually it was assisted by the lost tribes of the northern kingdom. So they were actually on the opposite side. That same Babylon took the southern kingdom into captivity, so the two are not connected in any sense, nor does Scripture ever do that if you look at it in Northern's history. Babylonia was centered on the Euphrates, however, not the Tigris. Tobit was in Nineveh and mentions trips where he saw family, in other words, lost tribes of Israel from the northern kingdom, in Media. Now that is to the east of even that. So where was Daniel? He was not on the Tigris River. Therefore, he did not have a vision on the Tigris when he says Hittichel. Daniel, from a boy, was taken to stand in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar. Where's that? Now, he lived there, or at least next to the palace, on the grounds. The wall is bigger. There's a whole community there in that area. But that palace is not located on the Tigris River. It is on the Euphrates. And remember, Daniel was a slave there. He was well-educated, he was a lot of things, but he was a slave. He served in the palace to stand in the palace, as we just saw. He certainly knew what the Tigris River was, yet, you know, he never mentions it in all of his writings. He actually also never identifies the Euphrates by name either, even though he mentions it being uh, dried up in the day where... Um, Darius from Persia, the king of Persia, actually sacked it in the days of Belshazzar. But I'll get to that. So, he never mentions the Euphrates by name either. Not once in his book. Let's look at the context of Daniel's life, though, which most do not seem to get. So, let's be clear. In the third year of Belshazzar of Babylon's reign, oh yeah, there are actually history textbooks that claim this guy never existed and never ruled in Babylon. And then they try to claim that Daniel is not scripture or historically accurate, essentially. As a result, yet, they have now found a cylinder which historically records that Belshazzar did in fact reign in his father's absence. His father traveled elsewhere to Arabia. So, see, Daniel is perfectly accurate history. Yes, history. You know, Belshazzar, though, for he is the one who was so brazen that he took out the golden elements that were taken from the temple in Judea by Nebuchadnezzar, and he used them as party favors through a great big party of temple goods, basically. Not a good idea. And by the way, you can tell he was not close to Daniel. During that party, handwriting appears on the wall. And we've heard that. The handwriting on the wall. That's where that comes from. 
as a warning of the coming invasion by Medo-Persia, which took the city by redirecting the Euphrates and without even war. And Belshazzar died that very night, in fact. But by the third year of Belshazzar, in this passage, where is Daniel? Is he in Babylon? No. In fact, Belshazzar did not know Daniel, at least not well, at the time. He knew of him, but he didn't seem to have a relationship with him. Because others had to come to him to tell him and remind him of the great Daniel who interprets visions and dreams so that he could interpret what was written on the wall. And he had Daniel brought there, so Daniel was not there. Certainly Daniel would not have been at that party anyway. He says he is in the palace, Daniel says he is in the palace in Susa. Where's that? That's in Iran, not Iraq. That's not near the Tigris or the Euphrates. It's all the way over on the Persian Gulf on the Iranian side. By the river, what river? The river Tigris? No, the river Ulai, next to the Persian Gulf in Iran, not the Tigris River in Iraq. Is that the Tigris River? No, Daniel never lived there. Whose palace was in Susa? Nebuchadnezzar's palace was built in Babylon, of course. But remember this in chapter 8, and Daniel's vision is in chapter 10. So we're building up to that in context to explain to you that Daniel didn't even live in Babylon during that time, nor on the Euphrates, and certainly not on the Tigris. Therefore, this vision in, in chapter 10, and we'll build there, was not there, but obviously in Susa, near what we have defined as the Hittichel River of Genesis 2. Because he's referring to the same one. Daniel never mentions the Tigris River ever. He was in the palace of Darius the Mede, the ruler of Medo-Persia, who had conquered Babylon at the time of his vision. Hmm. Now, this is chapter 9, so we're still not even to chapter 10 yet, and where was Darius's palace? In Susa, Iran, not Nebuchadnezzar's. We have found the ruins of that palace of Darius in Susa even today, and it's pictured in the background. Daniel no longer lived in Babylon and never lived on the Tigris in any definition whatsoever in any of his writings. So now... We have progressed through chapter 8 and 9, setting up the geographic context. Let's get to chapter 10. However, even chapter 10 begins with the three-year reign of Cyrus the Great, king of Medo-Persia. So now we have, okay, Darius conquers Babylon, and now Cyrus the Great has taken over. So this is years later. So Daniel is taken to Susa and served the Persian Empire, Medo-Persian Empire, now, not Babylon. And he did in the previous chapter, years before. He was already in Susa, and he remained there. So there's no evidence that he ever returned to Babylon after that point, other than perhaps to visit. But again, things changed. Power shifted. And now a totally different empire with a totally different seat of power in which Darius and Cyrus actually both looked to Daniel for advice. So he clearly was taken under their wing and not left in Babylon anyway. So where is Daniel? He is still in Susa, Iran, in chapter 10 still, next to the Persian Gulf of the Indian Ocean on the river Ulai, not on the Tigris River. Never fits, never works, not the Hittichel. Now, the river Ulai is not the Hittichel either, as he calls it, the river Ulai, not Hittichel. He's talking about something else. He talks of his three-week preparation for the coming vision. Want to hear from Yahuwah? Take Daniel's example. And yes, it does work. 
Still in the area of Susa, by the Indian Ocean, Daniel has a vision in which he identifies he was next to the Hidakal River. Now, does this require the Hidakal River to now rise out of the sea to be used here? What nonsense. Yes, the other channel claims such. Absolute nonsense. It's still there, and in fact still functions to this day as its hydrothermal vents still make the ocean salty, as the other rivers from Eden as well do, and it heats the great deep, maintaining our entire delicate ecosystem, and to ignore that is just going to lead to erroneous conclusions, as it does for those guys. What are the banks, or really the side of the Hidakal River, as it says today? Not the Tigris River, which cannot qualify and is not actually really near there, but instead the Hidakal River from Eden on the bottom of the ocean floor in the Indian Ocean, which runs all the way up to the Persian Gulf. Now, we'll cover this, but that is where Daniel was. He was not next to the Tigris, and this cannot be applied as the Tigris. That's erroneous. And Daniel died in Susa. So he lived in three places. Judea as a child, then he was taken captive into Babylon, specifically in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar on the Euphrates, not the Tigris, and then he is relocated in his latter days to Susa, Iran, especially when Persia took over and even before in the days of Belshazzar, who was not so familiar with Daniel. But he never lived on the Tigris River, never mentions visiting it, and never mentions it in his vision, and if he did, he would have called it either Tigris in Hebrew, just as Tobit did, or we will show you the other term used in Scripture for the Tigris throughout the Old Testament. Let's take a look. Second Chronicles 9.16, and he, Solomon, now we know Solomon very well, we've covered that extensively, reigned over all the kings. What kings? Well, the kings from the river. The river? What river? It doesn't say, does it? It says in Hebrew, Ha-Nahar, the river. What river? We'll show you. Even unto the land of the Philistines on the coast of the Mediterranean and to the border of Egypt to the southeast. This is actually fully defining Solomon's territory. And it is not the whole earth that would be wrong. The Assyrians were the power to the east, which eventually became the first empire, not Babylon, which followed. This is Solomon's time. This is identifying the Tigris River as the river, and it defines the western border as the Mediterranean Sea and Egypt to the southeast, fully defining the areas which Solomon ruled. Notice, it is not even the whole earth in Solomon's day, because the known earth went beyond those borders, so that's not it. In fact, Egypt would have to be included, and it is not. Solomon never ruled. Egypt doesn't work. Now, for those trying to inject into Psalm 72, such as the Catholic Church, who says at the beginning that that is of Solomon, and then it's a prophecy from David of his coming son, in which Kings of the earth, but specific territories, Tarshish, Ophir, Sheba, and Seba, are going to bring gifts to this son. But this son rules the whole earth. Solomon did not. This son is Messiah because in this passage he saves souls and he redeems souls, which could not possibly be Solomon. And for context earlier in the same chapter, we can understand this too. Beside that which Chapman and merchants brought, and all the kings of Arabia. Where is that? Oh, same place. And governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. As shown on this map, from a Muslim source even, that defines where Arabs or Arabia was, ancient Arabia's borders 
would be from the Tigris River, not the Euphrates, the, to the Mediterranean Sea, the land of the Philistines, who lived right there on the coast. They're well, well known for that. Even the Bible says so. To Egypt on the southwest. Not only needs that direction, as you can see, the rest is bordered by the Indian Ocean, the Red Sea, and the uh, Persian Gulf, which are really all the Indian Ocean or Arabian Sea at that time in history, which need not be mentioned. It actually fully defines his kingdom. So those trying to take this passage in Psalm 72, for instance, to say Solomon ruled the whole earth, not even close. And he knew that. The books of Kings and Chronicles from Solomon's era also render the Euphrates five times, but by name, Euphrates in Hebrew or Greek in the Septuagint if you wish to go there. And it's also the same name in the New Testament, Euphrates, not Hittichel, ever. But these two, they do not. When Daniel says Hittichel, when Genesis says Hittichel, it's not referring to the Tigris nor the Euphrates in that passage whatsoever. Now, why is the river the name of the Tigris River. I mean, isn't that just generic? I mean, couldn't you just apply that to anything? No, this passage is specific. This is referring to the Tigris, and the rest that we'll share will just totally bring this home, and you'll see, yeah, that's exactly what this means. It was known as the river because it is the origin. Because remember, what is on the banks on the eastern side of the Tigris River? Shinar where the Tower of Babel was built. That is the great heresy, according to the Bible, after the flood. So why would it be called the river? Because it is the river of abomination, of where the occult originates after the flood. That's significant, and it is the river. Here we are in 1 Kings 14, who calls the Euphrates by name other times, as we already mentioned. But here, it identifies the river, not the Euphrates, the Tigris. Now, this is a retelling of the warning to the lost tribes of Israel, who were taken into captivity into Assyria. Where? Beside the Tigris River, to the east of the Tigris River. Euphrates, not involved. For the Lord shall smite Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Israel out of this good land, which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river. What river? We have history to tell us this is not difficult, because they have made their groves, provoking the Lord to anger. Where was the northern kingdom of Israel taken? Beyond the Tigris River to the east of it specifically. The book of Tobit is clear. He lived, and he's a lost tribe of Naphtali, Naphtali from the northern kingdom. He lived in Nineveh on the eastern side of the Tigris and others in Media, even further east that he describes. Ezra speaks of the same when he discusses the replacements brought into Samaria, or the northern kingdom of Israel, who replaced the lost tribes of the north. And the lost tribes of the northern kingdom were then taken captive into Assyria, again beyond the Tigris River to the east of it. The Euphrates is not used in this passage, nor in definition here. And the rest of the nations whom the great and noble Asnapar brought over and set in the cities of Samaria. So he's talking about the displacement of Medians and Persians, essentially. Those who lived in Nineveh, he brought them into Samaria to replace Israel. And then he took the Israelites over into Assyria. And the rest that are on this side, the river. What river is he talking about? He's not talking about the Euphrates. He's talking about the Tigris because this is the northern tribes. That's where they were taken. And at such time, this is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even unto 
Artaxerxes, the king, that would be Persia, which is on the east side of the Tigris as well, much further. Thy servants, the men on this side, the river, same thing, and at such time. And he does not just do this once, but 17 times throughout his writings. The river is not the Euphrates, nor is it the Hittichel. It is the Tigris River, which has a biblical name, which is not Hittichel. Isaiah confirms the exact same use of the river as the Tigris River in 720. In the same day shall the Lord, Yahuwah, shave with a razor that is hired, namely, by them, beyond the river. What river? By the king of Assyria, Ashur, on the eastern side of the Tigris. The Tigris is the defining point here, and it is the river. The head and the hair of the feet, and it shall also consume the beard. The king of Assyria is based on the east side of the Tigris, period, not the Euphrates, is not used to define Assyria. He repeats this in chapter 8, verse 7, and by the way, six times total, Isaiah calls the Tigris River, the river. Jeremiah 2.18 records the Tigris as the river. There you go again in the same context. And now, what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt to drink the waters of Sihor? That's a river in Egypt. Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria, not Babylon, Assyria, which is where? On the Tigris River. To drink the waters of the river. Where? In Assyria. What is the Assyrian River? The Tigris is the center of Assyria, not the Euphrates, and not the Hittichel. The river in Assyria in which it is based and where it took the lost tribes is the Tigris. So why? What is this mixing we are seeing? Why not the Tigris River as something else? Why not just call it the Tigris River? Well, because it is the river of abomination. Because this is the origin of the occult. Their false, cre other than before the flood, but from the flood forward, this is where the evil happened. In fact, K. Anem, in this very area, found tablets that were carved by Nephilim and fallen angels, and these. In fact, he sinned, owning to them. He hid them from Noah because he knew full well that these were evil. Now, their false creation narrative, the so-called cradle of civilization, is right here. No, it was not. That's not true. The Philippines is the land of creation, not Iraq. Does this look like an area which once housed the Garden of Eden? Give me a break. Of course not. False flood stories resonate from this era, from this place. It was a Nephilim hotbed full of Nephilim and Watcher lore, not Bible. It has a false flood narrative that actually is even represented falsely because even in their own flood narrative, they land on a mountain. And if they landed on a mountain, there had to have been a worldwide flood. Duh. I mean, it's amazing how scholars would read that and then say, oh, well, it's talking about a local flood because, um, you know, they landed on uh, a mountain, but, but it was a local flood. Well, how did that much water go all the way up to the top of a mountain unless there was a global flood? They propagate a false arc landing on a mountain in the wrong direction, 12,000 feet too short to fit scripture, and oh, by the way, in their terms, the mountain of salvation, according to the writings of Nephilim. Very nice. This is the origin of a false religion, and false narratives originate there. They even put forth a false claim of the three wise men trying to take that too from 
the Philippines, which is the actual origin of the three wise men. Actually, there were six or more. But regardless, they were kings, by the way, according to David. But Babylon the Great will fall. And yes, it still survives today and becomes the enemy that is flown through all of history, all the way into the end times. It's the clash of two origins, the false origin of the Nephilim and the origin of man. And that's what this all boils down to. Now, we'll cover that more in another video, but that is why the Tigris, the origin of the Tower of Babel, and the great heresy, that is why it's called the river in Hebrew. Many times. So, all in all, this is why this is the river, the Tigris. Not a good connotation, and it's identified as such 27 times, all in all, in Scripture, versus one stretched etymology in Daniel that does not even fit Daniel, who never lived on the Tigris River. What nonsense! And Genesis is not talking about the Tigris either. This is actually pretty simple when you break it down. The problem is no one has until now. It is the river, the Tigris, where occult claims and history begins from the very enemy of the state of Israel since the beginning and to the end. And they are against Yahuwah, not for him. And any of their writings are not the origin of the Bible, but the opposite, always. There are the rivers from Eden, and we prove it out. No one has been able to disprove this, by the way. Not one element, because our theory matches Scripture perfectly, and theirs do not. They are full of flaws, they're full of flawed logic, and none of them work, and the Hittichal, most especially, is not the Tigris. So no, they didn't prove us wrong, because they say it is. They have to prove it is. They do not, they cannot, they will not, ever. A closer look at the trenches in that area, which make up this ancient Hittichel River, which were all connected before the flood, which are functional to this day with hydrothermal vents that are balancing the salinity of the ocean as well as heating the great deep, keeping our entire ecosystem going, still functioning. But it travels all the way up into the Persian Gulf, in fact. Yep, right where Daniel was when he had his vision, close to Susa. It is likely Daniel enjoyed more freedom in Persia than in Babylon, especially when Cyrus built a new palace up north in Ekbatana Media as well, and Daniel, it appears, remained in Susa. He was on the shore of the Indian Ocean when he saw his vision, and there are several nice beaches there even, on the banks of the Hittichel, river, the ancient river, which is now covered by the ocean and positioned on the bottom of the ocean floor. Now to address a further side note, it does not need to rise out of this sea, which is really very stupid criticism. And by the way, they say it has to rise in Daniel, and then it has to rise again. Well, this one's really dumb, because they mix up the Euphrates and the Tigris, which is never Hittichel, ever. The Hittichel is not mentioned in Revelation, so no, it doesn't need to rise up and then dry up in the end times. No, nope, doesn't happen, doesn't need to be. They just don't know Scripture. So let's look at this one last piece. This Scripture was used on another channel to claim the Hittichel appears in Revelation. That is ignorance. The river Euphrates dries up, not the Hittichel, nor the Tigris for that matter. It isn't mentioned there either. There is no mention of the Hittichel in this passage. It is the word Euphrates in Greek, which is pretty much the same in Hebrew, but essentially the same word nonetheless and not Hittichel. Just more mixing from a group that is biblically and historically illiterate 
and you aren't going to learn anything from that channel. So, is the Tigris River the biblical Hittichel of Genesis 2? Not even remotely, and fully 100% proven by the God culture, and fully messed up by another channel. The Tigris River cannot fit the description of the Hittichel River. It does not have the right source, and it has to. It is not the same word even in Hebrew, and the Bible has a name for the Tigris, which we have shown you many times. 27, in fact. Verses 1. This is why you only see the Hittichel mentioned twice in the Bible, but there is one more book to deal with, the Book of Jubilees. It also uses Hittichel twice in its directions of Noah's division of the earth, and if you apply it as the Tigris, well, it quickly fails and falls apart, and the passages then make no sense whatsoever. However, we are going to release the next video following this, where we actually show this full mapping when Shem divided his territories among his sons, which we actually had planned doing anyway at some point, and we'll go ahead and do it now. This will be the final nail in the coffin of this bluster from those who are ignorant of scripture and history about the Hittichel River, which is never the Tigris River, and we have fully proven that at this point. We could begin ripping through their videos of utter nonsense, especially their Two Witnesses video, which is utterly ridiculous, coming to a conclusion that two communist countries have to be the two witnesses as a result of, well, they now have new firebombs. <laughs> That's pretty laughable, especially when we've had nuclear weapons, which are far greater in power and even fire as it melts the flesh off of bones. And the leader in missiles worldwide is still the U.S., so if you wanted to base it on the most missiles, you'd have to include them, which we certainly wouldn't do, and they don't do, but it's actually fairly ridiculous for them to do it that way. It's really nonsense. And even in nuclear weapons, the one country doesn't even rank very high in nuclear weapons uh, when you look at it that way, but you can't, because these are physical prophets who physically die, resurrect, and ascend to heaven, and... You can't place that on those two communist countries, which are the most godless countries in all of history, having murdered more of even their own citizens, but more people than any nations on all of the earth in all of history combined just in the last hundred years alone. Yeah, those are the two great prophets of the end times, not even remotely. They keep slipping into these two countries, by the way, which show up as the savior of the world, and they are actually the two countries who, in fact, are the most godless. Uh, yeah, right. That's called propaganda, by any other definition. So, we don't play to that. We even looked uh, briefly at their Gog and Magog video, which, by the way, they even screw up that passage. The passage says Gog of Magog, not Gog and Magog. Gog is of Magog, which is Russia. That is his place of origin, but not his seat of power. His seat of power is Tubal and Meshach, which, if you look at the actual definition of territories, especially from the Book of Jubilees, is Western Europe the colonial powers, and Central Europe, the Pope, and Germany, and Italy, the Roman Empire, all of the above, which really fits history over the last thousand years so, so well. So even during the rivers from Eden, they prop up those countries uh, and talk about the rebuilding of the Silk Road as if that's a prophetic aim anywhere in Scripture other than for the beast who will, in fact, unite the world under his evil power. He will establish one world government, economy, and religion, and it will not be Yahuwah's people nor his religion, which he never established one, but relationship. They won't care about money and economy. The entire perspective of that channel is highly lined with propaganda, and we won't ask you not to watch but learn to discern 
which many of our viewers already have. And we've even seen comments there where they are absolutely calling them out for this already. As you do, you will have a tough time tolerating their, again as a viewer said, saliva. Watch our mapping of Shem's territory next for the final proof which will bring this all home. Thank you for watching our flood series. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. Share this video with others and check out our website at thegodculture.com. You can support us on Patreon if you feel led as well. Because of our Patreon supporters especially, we have been able to offer conferences in the Philippines mostly for free. No registration and no offering. We thank you all for this support. Our next one is coming up, and there's some big ones like Deval, for instance, Baso Subu, and Bacolod, many others working, and we're very excited. Make sure you register on our website and go there for full details, and we'll update constantly, thegodculture.com. Join our Facebook, come and friend us, and like our Facebook, our new Facebook, The God Culture space hyphen space original always remember to prove all things for yourself and share these videos with others because youtube is not yahuwah bless all